What's happening, all you NTs? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for my overview of the Thing Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks of Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on December 13th or 14th, depending on where you get your books. And speaking of direct market, that's exactly the cover we're looking at here. On the left-hand side is the cover to the standard edition by John Byrne. And one thing I want you to take note of is the spine. It is a different design than the spine here on the direct market cover. The standard edition, again, available everywhere, whereas the direct market cover is only available through places like your local comic book store, CheapGraphicNovels.com, WaltzComicShop.com, ComicsBugle.com, DyingBreedCollectors.com, InStockTrades, Tales of Wonder, Organic Price Books, those kind of places will have the direct market cover. But everything else underneath the dust jacket will be identical. All right, this amazing image by Ron Wilson. I love the way that he draws the thing. On the spine right here, Marvel Omnibus, the thing, Burn Carlin Wilson. And you have a picture of Ben Grimm down there, old blue eyes. And all the covers that are collected in this particular collection. ISBN, $125, rated Team Plus. Underneath... The Dutch, by the way, if you're wondering uh, who Carlin is, that's obviously John Byrne. That's Mike Carlin and Ryan Wilson. Underneath, the dust jacket. But before we look at the art on board, I did want to show this, that the orange rocky pattern that's all over the back is also here in the flaps right there. I'm curious why they decided to go with purple for the tone underneath the dust jacket, but I do love the fact that we have all these images of Aunt Petunia's favorite nephew just everywhere. I love that they're doing different things like that in these new Omnis. Okay, we're going to open this up, uh, take a look at the artwork. I'm going to be talking about the stories in here and where it kind of fits into the Fantastic Four reading order in case you're one of those that wants to keep going back and forth, back and forth between Fantastic Four and the thing. You're nuts. I would just read this separately than the Fantastic Four, but hey, more power to you. All right, let's go ahead, crack this open, talk about the stories and show off this artwork. And of course, talk about the build of the book afterwards. All right, let's crack this big thing open. So here we have some orange pages, of course, with the pattern that we've seen before. Here are all the creators that helped put this book together. Well, if it wasn't for them, this book wouldn't have been put together to begin with. But the people that put this together down here, the collected editions people. And the writers over here, the pencilers, the inkers, and the colorists, letters, assistant editors, editors at the time. The table of contents, where you're going to find each of these issues, starting with the thing number one, which came out July 1983. And... Here we go. So this collects The Thing 1 through 36, Fantastic Four 274, 277, 296, Secret Wars number 7, West Coast Avengers number 10, The Quest Probe issue number 3, Marvel Tales 198, Marvel Graphic Novel Hulk and Thing Big Change. Oh man, that is such a beautiful book. Uh, and then material for Marvel Fanfare number 15 and Marvel Super Heroes number 5. The book has 1160 pages. All right. So, what is this about? When should you read this if you're if, if you're curious about this particular title? Well, keep in mind this isn't really the first thing ongoing series. He had a 100th issue running series called Marvel 2 and 1. As a matter of fact, the previous month before this Marvel 2 and 1 number 100 came out, series got canceled and they said, "Hey, Let's go ahead and start making a Thing solo series. Now, I don't know if that was the idea of John Byrne, if that or the editors might have had something to do with that. Regardless, here we are. The series lasted 36 issues. So I spoke of John Byrne, and that's exactly who the writer is at the very beginning of this particular book. And the same month that issue number one came out, 
issue two, I think it was 252 of the Fantastic Four, the landscape issue that I went over in my overview of the first Fantastic Four omnibus by John Byrne. The exact same month, both of those issues came out. Now, you can read issue 252 and then jump over here to see what Ben Grimm is doing, what his solo adventures are about. So, this is an interesting collection, and I know I may say that a lot, but this really is an interesting collection because the first 10 issues are kind of like trial and error issues. They really started to just focus on the thing and what makes him tick. Because, I mean, for the longest time, the thing has been a character that, to a lot of people, was the favorite character of the Fantastic Four. It was this tortured soul that is no longer human. He's a monster. Stan Lee's favorite story that he ever did was this man, this monster from Fantastic Four. So he is a fan favorite. So it makes sense that he would get his own ongoing series. Now, this is a lot different than what was going on in the pages of the Fantastic Four. There's less adventures. This is more down to earth. And I say that at first because, for example, the first issue is all about Ben Grimm telling his past to a bunch of kids that are in a gang. He's trying to open up to them. He's trying to reach them, but to no avail. Kids are going to be punks no matter what. The second issue, which is actually inked by John Byrne, not only is he writing it, but he is inking. Ron Wilson, of course, still doing the pencils. This is about an old girlfriend that writes him a letter that says she wants to see him again. And this is during the time when him and Alicia... We're together. Now, that's the thing about the thing. <laughs> Only dad joke. I'm making today, I swear. Uh, but that's the issue. I'm talking about comics. Damn it, I can't even use that word. That is that might be the problem with reading the thing by itself. Because, for example, you have Alicia right here. She's hurt. She's in the hospital. How does she get there? Well, in order to find out, you have to read Fantastic Four. It's that whole Annihilus storyline. But anyway, he goes and visits her and tells her about this girl that reached out to him and she wants to see him again. Now, this girl broke Ben Grimm's heart when they were in college and she's gone to become a popular film star. And there's definitely a twist with that. Now, this third issue, this is the one that has Crystal reach out to the thing, telling him that, look, I have a baby with Quicksilver, Luna... He wants to put the Terrigen Mist on her. I am opposed to that because he's a mutant and I'm an inhuman. Things can happen and things can go wrong. And for the first time ever, we get to hear Lockjaw talk. And it's almost heartbreaking what he says. And it, something is revealed about Lockjaw that not a lot of people that have been reading comics at the time agreed with. And to this day, I still have an issue with what John Byrne was trying to say there. Then we get this amazing issue number four. This is I, Monster, where Lockjaw and The Thing are helping out this mother that's hiding out a secret. It's this whole village that's turning against the mother and this horrible secret that she has. And of course, it is a monster that she's hiding. But it is such a beautiful and powerful story. My goodness. Uh, we have the Puppet Master come in. And this is the only one with actually a lot of action in it come in and manipulate a couple of um, superheroes. This is the cover to the omnibus right there. And this is the second part of that. We have the thing actually mutate into this Egyptian character. This is the Egyptian story arc right there. So as you can tell, <laughs> this is when Ben gets uh, possessed by this Egyptian character. They're all different type of stories in here. I love this issue right here. This is Marvel Fanfare number 15. And it is Barry Windsor Smith drawing the thing. And it's just like a day in the life of that particular character with some villains thrown in. Then we get to issue number 10. Now issue number 10 is where things are going to change. Starts off with him and Alicia loving on each other. Walking through the park. And things are about to change because of this little storyline, which was huge, called Secret Wars. Now, I mentioned this in my overview yesterday, if you watch all my videos. Uh, but it was the upcoming, or the collected editions released from Marvel this week. And in the Ma Marvel Masterworks Amazing Spider-Man number 24, 
they did a time jump that all takes place after secret wars so the idea behind secret wars was okay we're gonna sell some toys okay that's actually the main idea but the story is that the editors got together with everybody and said all right look there's gonna be 12 issue maxi series in between your issues though you have to reveal what has changed in some of these characters in the last year that have been in battle world it's the world that secret wars takes place so give us an idea of what you've got what your characters are going to be doing and how they're going to be changed now some of them change drastically of course like spider-man for example got a brand new costume um and again that actually didn't happen until the eighth issue of secret wars the change with ben Grimm doesn't happen until the 12th issue of secret wars so what you're about to see they had to go on for almost a year before we got to reveal exactly how he got here so between issue 10 and 11 uh, we have the fantastic four not all of them but johnny storm reed richards and ben Grimm go to this portal that takes them to battle world and off they go for a year when the thing returns you find out or the monthly comic rather that ben Grimm decided to stay in battle world because over there he can change between human form and his rock form so why would he not want to stay and he tells reed that he leaves and of course in the pages of fantastic four by john byrne the thing is replaced by she hulk so that's where his adventures take place now so the first 10 issues are pretty much down to earth type of stories a couple of action-packed stories in there but these are just a completely different ball game. Still Ron Wilson drawing the stuff. Still John Byrne writing and plotting most of this. And here he meets this young lady. And she plays a big important part in this particular era of the, fan, or of the thing. Sorry, But this is Tariana. And she kind of becomes his, I don't want to say sidekick, but uh, they do go on adventures together. And again, during this time, he can switch between his human form and his rock form. Now, this goes on for about 12 issues, because remember what I said, it took a year for issue number 12 of Secret Wars to come out. So eventually, of course, he makes it back to Earth, and I'm not going to reveal how, but my goodness, there are some heartbreaking things that happen in how that all takes place. This is issue of Quest Probe, number three. This is Scott Adams' story. It was a four-issue limited series, I believe, and this is only issue number three that's collected in there. Now, at the end of issue 22 of The Thing, there's a big cliffhanger. Because remember how I said he's going to come back to this world, leave Battle World, because there is a huge twist with that, and I don't want to spoil that for anybody in case you're reading this for the first time and I realize, yes, these stories are 30-plus years old, but it could be somebody's first time reading this. Uh, if you want to see a deep dive of some of these stories i from time to time i do join old reader new reader where we talk about an old story and my co-hosts are the new readers so we may do the thing one day all right so the thing is returned back to earth with issue of fantastic four number 277 this is a really cool experimental issue i feel like john byrne was just trying out different things remember i said he did that landscape issue well here we have two different stories happening at the same time we have Ben Grimm returning to Earth, and down here we have Mephisto's Hell on Earth, uh, focusing on Reed, Sue, and Franklin, and up here is this confrontation between two best friends. Now, Ben has been gone, he's been in Battle World for what seems like a year. Meanwhile, my dude Johnny Storm has been, how do I put this, keeping Alicia Masters company, and Ben finds out by going to Alicia's apartment and finding johnny there shirtless and he's like what the hell is going on here and alicia tells him look johnny and i are together now you were gone you left and it breaks his heart now there's another revelation that happens in this issue of the thing issue number 23 and that is a huge revelation by reed richards and it breaks his heart even further so he's done he leaves the Fantastic Four. He's like, you know, She-Hulk, you've replaced me for a year. Keep the job. I'm out. So he goes on a walkabout, if you will. He he wanders around and he goes interesting places. 
I love the the title right here, Rhino on the rebound, because that's what it feels like. He's like picking himself up and rebounding with the first person that he sees that he can hit. But eventually he sees a circus. He's reunited with a friend over in, on the circus. There is a lady on a poster that he sees that reminds him of Tatiana, but this is the friend that he meets again. This is somebody that he was he had met in uh, Marvel 2 and 1. So before this took place. And that is Vance Astrovic or Vance Astro. Now, if you know the history of the Marvel Universe, you know Vance Astro will eventually become Major Victory and lead the Guardians of the Galaxy. But before then, he's a kid that's running away from home because his father's abusive. Now, all that is touched upon in issues of New Warriors. That's right, New Warriors is the center of everything. I said what I said. But here he reunites with Vance Astro, and they kind of become good friends. They, they start walking about together. I guess that's what you would call it. We meet the Thunder Riders, who were eventually, I think, no, no, actually, no. They were originally called Team America in an issue of Captain America. Look, it was the early 80s, man. America was huge in motorcycle riders, and the Thunder Riders came about. These characters later on appeared in New Mutants, I think 4, 5, and 6, if I'm not mistaken. That's the first time I ever heard of them. Now, he sticks around with them because he has a connection with this young lady right here. Because he says, oh, that is Tatiana. That's got to be Tatiana. It looks just like her. Now, Tatiana was that lady that I said was kind of his partner in crime during his time on Battleworld for about a year. But it is not. This is a young lady that will play a big part in The Thing's life. In the pages of The Thing and then in the Fantastic Four. And that is Sharon Ventura. Now... Saying that name, some of you will probably think, oh, in the Fantastic Four, she becomes Miss Thing, and you can read those issues to find out. But during this, is she's just Sharon for a while until she gets kidnapped and things happen to her, and she becomes Miss Marvel. There's a fight here with the Beyonder. This is from uh, the Thing issue number 30. So from Secret Wars 2, the Beyonder actually had a human form. Here's the movie with Sharon, and they're filming Dinosaur Boy. Or no, uh, Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy, sorry, or Moon Gal, rather. There's issue of Secret Wars number two, and then when he reunites with Vance. Now, of course, Vance's parents are searching for him, so eventually they have to go their separate ways. So that's pretty much all I want to say. Hey, I wanted to talk about uh, Miss Marvel right there. Now, Sharon Ventura as Miss Marvel after getting kidnapped and getting experimented on. It's what happens when you are attracted to superheroes. Those are the chances. And the title was eventually canceled with issue number 36. Now, what is also collected in here is the wrap-up issue of The Thing. They wanted to continue the story that kind of left some loose ends in issue 36 of The Thing. I don't want to look at that in case people haven't read it. But they tie up the loose ends with this Avengers West Coast. And then, of course, the return of Ben Grimm to the Fantastic Four in this issue, Homecoming. And one thing you're going to note here are all the wonderful, talented artists here. Barry Windsor Smith, Carrie Gamble, Ron Friends, Al Milgram, John Buscema, Mark Sylvester and Jerry Ordway, the plotter Jim Shooter, Stan Lee writing the script. Oh, so awesome for this big 25th anniversary. So, yes... The Thing and the Fantastic Four have to fight the Mole Man. But by the end of it, he's like, all right, I'm back. And and that's pretty much it. That is the Thing Omnibus. Of course, I've left out so much. Please read it for yourself because this was a surprisingly good read. There's a couple of issues I had never read in there. And I wanted more. And it's weird to think about, like, the first 10 issues, I know some people don't like, but I happen to really enjoy because it's so down to earth. It's so different than the things that were happening in the Fantastic Four. And I kind of wanted more of that. I was like, oh, I don't want any more action. By the time issue 11 came in and it changed everything up, I was like, oh, are, are, we, are we done with down to earth stories? So John Byrne stuck around to about issue 15. Then Mike Carlin took over. Bob Harris did some of the script. But it was mainly Mike Carlin writing the thing after Byrne left. With the exception of this back here, The Incredible Hulk and The Thing. 
the big change. This is an original graphic novel, as like God Loves, Man Kills, X Men, the the death of Captain Marvel, those kind of graphic novels. Well, this is the Hulk and the Thing, by Jim Starlin and Bernie Wrightson. Look, if I need to sell you on this book, this is the reason here. Bernie Wrightson, legendary Bernie Wrightson, drawing two big monsters. Oh my gosh, the Thing and the Hulk. Hell yes. All day. Every day. It's a rarity to see his masterful art on superhero pages, but here we have an entire graphic novel all the way in the back drawn by him. Oh, it's so freaking awesome. Uh, we have, I think this is the forward. Yeah, this is the prologue right here to the Marvel Tales Sensational Spider-Man, which is a reprint. Then we have the Marvel superheroes. Uh, this is issue number five. And this is, I believe, the, yes, Spring Special. But they only collect the pages with the thing. Now, we have Ron Wilson come back and uh, David Michelinie writing this. So, yes, towards the end of um, the thing's run, it was mainly drawn by Paul Ryan and Paul, uh, Paul Neary. Ron Wilson was still doing most of it, but by the time we get to, like, the uh, 32, 33... 33 mainly, we get Paul Neary's um, artwork. So one thing I didn't talk about was the border around the cover. So it is that orange uh, rocky pattern around those covers. But yeah, Paul Neary is the artist. But Ron Wilson seriously drawing like 90% of the thing ongoing series. And I can see why John Byrne left. It's not because he wanted to stop talking about the thing. But it was because he was writing and drawing and sometimes inking and lettering the Fantastic Four. On top of that, he started doing Alpha Flight during this time, too. So, of course, he had to give something up, and it was the thing. Regardless, this was an extraordinary experience, and I'm so glad that Marvel decided to finish it. Because I think the first two tr trade paperbacks, the classics, which have been out of print for almost a decade now, I think they only went to issue 20 or maybe 21, 22. Now, as far as the back matter that's collected in here, we do have some house ads. This is one of my favorite ones that I remember from many, many issues of Marvel Comics when they were talking about the new format for the actual single issue. So the new trade dress was changing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it made sense, right? Why would you want to lose more picture? And this format, we have more picture. Then we have some pinups back here, some letter page art, which I wish they did collect the letter pages. That's one of the things that I wish they had done here. This is the Marvel Fanfare number 10 pinup by Brent Anderson. Marvel Fanfare 22 pinup. Then we have the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, 1983, the 1985 edition with his new getup. More of the handbook, original art right there by Ron Wilson. Uh, Hilary Barta actually doing some of the inks. And the one inker I didn't talk about was Joe Sinat. How Joe Sinat was inking a lot of the earlier issues of Ron Wilson. I think he was bringing that Kirby-like thing uh, into the spotlight. And I think that might have been an editorial move. I don't think that was a decision by either John Byrne or Ron Wilson to have Joe Sinat ink Ron Wilson's pencils. So of course, Joe Sinat was one of the inkers for Jack the King Kirby. But Hilary Barta was the... I think she did m most of the inks outside of Joe Sinat were done by Hilary Barta. And here we have the plot to the thing number 28 by Mike Carlin. And then the trade paperbacks. These are ones that I used to have. Trade paperback of the thing classic 1 and 2 was the cover to issue two now as far as the binding of the book and build of the book 1160 pages and there is that i this book is printed at the imac printer um now for some people you know immediately i say imac and they're like oh no thank you but i'm gonna be honest with you the paper stock this is thicker than what i've seen in donley printers I actually like the paper stock that they're using here. And it could be that they're using that paper stock for older books. Feels like the Conan. Like the Conan paper from like Marvel 
um, the Mar the original Marvel years and Savage Sword. That's what that feels like. And well, I'm pretty sure you all noticed it lays over really nice whether you're in the front, the middle, or all the way in the back with very minimal gutter loss. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you've never read this series, if you had the old classics trade paperbacks that never really finished, uh, if you have the Fantastic Four by John Byrne and you loved it and you want more, let me know all those comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. All that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. And on our Patreon, we have different tiers starting at a dollar for written documentation and voting on things. but. Yes, check that out. That is in the description of the video. And Spreadshop, we have our t-shirts and logos on stickers and things like that. But everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.